Perfect. Who better than Derek, Pat, Andrew, the wrestling crew? Man, they bout to put an end to y'all careers like a finishing move. They bout to give y'all facts on these cats that's fighting on these mats. Y'all can't see them like John Cena. Even if y'all had 2020 vision, y'all better listen. Pay attention and take notes down and realize that it's not your time now. And watch these three kings take the crown. Hey, hey. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Wrestling IQ 101. I'm Andrew and alongside Derek. Yep. And today we are joined by Colin West, man. How's it going? Hey, really, really good. I have uh, had a very good week in terms of Synergy Pro Wrestling and setting up things for July the 21st. Uh, but also got a big show coming up with UWA Elite this Saturday, uh, May the 5th, which would be uh, based on kind of the Infinity War bit. UWA Elite is presenting Gold Rush Championship Gauntlet. I'll be on commentary with Eric Corbis. And uh, I guess you guys wanted to run down the card a little bit, talk about what we've got to offer over in South River on Saturday. Yeah, man, absolutely. What a cool. huge card. So a have. lot of action going on. Yeah. Yeah, so let's uh, let's jump into it. We got a got a lot of great stuff going on here, a lot of matches, uh, qualifying matches for the championship gauntlet. Um, let's start with the first one. I'll start with I'll start with uh, Robbie Roller facing Mike Dell. That should be a really good match right there. Uh, that's my actual pick for for show stealer of the night for a couple of reasons. Uh, Dell and Roller go back almost a decade with each other, and not a lot of people know this. Back in the day, before Beyond Wrestling was the big thing that everybody knows it to be now, uh, when it was just starting, when Drew Cordero kind of had a vision, there was a core of guys that would kind of hang out and build this Beyond brand, and Eric Corbis, who was known as Corbis Fear at the time, uh, TJ Marconi, Joey Janela, Chris Dickinson, Pitt Boss, Jaga were, were some of the, the early guys. But uh, and LSG from Ring of Honor was there too. Two of the early younger guys that were a part of that Beyond experience that would take these long drives were Mike Dell and a guy who was known at that point as Zach Novak. And Zach Novak is now Robbie Rowland. Right. So these guys have gone back almost a decade with each other. But really haven't had the opportunity to wrestle that much, you know, in, in the UWA elite universe anyway. So these guys know each other really well. There's no love lost. And uh, I think that based on experience and based on how well they know each other, this could be a really, really sneaky good match. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I agree with that. So a match that has become so personal. Mike Seaway versus Joey Adams. I mean, what do you think people can expect, uh, Colin? Well, this is outside of the championship gauntlet. Let me lay down the gauntlet and what it is first, just so fans know kind of what to expect from the show. Yeah. Uh, there will be a, a match between all three singles champions, and we'll get to that later. TJ Blade, Bose, and Nicholas Ken. The man who gets pinned or made the submit in that match will have to defend their championship later that evening in a championship shuffle. Now, do you remember maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago, WWE did one, and it yeah. kind of, they put a time limit on the match, yeah. and whoever gets the most recent pinfall or submission is the interim champion. Yep. Mm-hmm. And whoever gets the last fall of the match wins the title. Yep. That's what we're dealing with here. Right. So there are going to be five qualifying matches, and then the loser of the triple threat will face those five individuals at the end of the night in a shuffle match for that championship. Nice. Now, why this is all important, why this type really has a lot to do with Mike Seaway versus Joey Adams, is this match is for the golden ticket. Joey Adams, through nefarious means, pretty much screwed Mike Seaway, who was at the top of the ladder, out of the golden ticket, which gives the man who holds it a chance to wrestle for any UWA Elite Championship anytime he wants. Mm-hmm. So, Mike Seaway, through a victory last month, was able to choose his match for this month and the stipulation. So he chose Joey Adams, and he chose that the Golden Ticket would be on the line. 
So, whichever champion loses that triple threat, guys, think of it this way. They'll have to face the two other champions in a triple threat and then go through a 20-minute shuffle match with five other guys. Whoever walks out of that match a champion is going to be severely wounded. We're going to have to go through a lot. And so, Seaway and Joey Adams, let's say it's the UWA League Championship that's on the line. That guy's going to be ripe for the ticket by the end of the night. Yeah. And so, basically, the man with the golden ticket holds the power. And Seaway and Adams, are probably right now, I would say, few to the year in UWA Elite thus far. So the fact that they're battling over a prize with so much power, it's a pretty big deal. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Another uh, another match you'll see between two two big guys. We got Corey, Corey Dillinger and we got Kyle the Beast. This is probably going to be nothing less than hard hitting between these two. You know what I like about about Corey Dillinger, and most people hate Corey Dillinger, but the thing I don't, the thing I like about Corey Dillinger is he reminds me of what KTP was a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. This big guy that was freakishly athletic and way quicker than people give him credit for for a guy his size, but just nobody knew about. Him. So there's a lot of Dillinger in KTP, but. The question here is, is Corey Dillinger big and bad enough to take out the beast at this point? Yeah. Everybody knows who KTV is. He's on all the spring break shows. He's up and down the East Coast. He's been to Mexico. He's been to both Mania Weeks over the last two years, really making a huge name for himself. Yeah. Dillinger, would, Dillinger would make a big name for himself if he was to win this match. You know what I like about Corey Dillinger? He's not, that, he's not afraid to smoke in the school. <laughs> no, I know. Right? He was walking out the other night with his vape pen, and I'm like, I don't think any of this is legal. Oh I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about any of this, I mean, but I'm not going to tell him no. Yeah, same here. Same here, Colin. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was, I, I was, I was cheering for that the whole night, but let's put back. Like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> You know, you know. Uh, another person you're not going to ever tell to stop is, is Miles Thomas. He just never stops talking. You know, the doctor, the, the chiller himself. You know, he's going up against Cyprus. I mean, let, let's talk about that match. I mean, you know, these guys have had, had a history together uh, last year. These guys have a real history with each other in UWA Elite, and this is another match that goes back a lot farther than people think. What a lot of people don't remember about Miles Thomas is that he was in a long-time tag team with Eddie Thomas, not just in UWA Elite, but at Jersey All Pro Wrestling. Yeah. Team Thomas goes back a long time. And in some of the places where Miles Thomas used to kind of pal around and train a little bit, Cypress would be there. Cypress has been making the rounds for a long time as well, during ECPW and in UWA Elite and all these places. So these guys go back a decade plus also. And... Uh, the one thing that they have in common for that period of time is they've hated each other for most of it. <laughs> so, so uh, this is a, a matchup of two kind of wily veterans who are never going to be the biggest guy in the fight or the fastest guy or the strongest guy in the fight, but they're going to know how to beat you. They do their homework, and they just don't like each other. And that's shoot. They just don't really care for each other that much. And mm-hmm. it's a big opportunity if Miles Thomas manages to get through this match for him to try to win some championship gold for the first time in UWA Elite. And for Cypress, the guy who goes back a decade plus with the UWA brand, chance to get back up on top of the title bet, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then now we got... Two guys who are on total opposite ends of the spectrum. We got J- Jacob Tarasso and Wade Kruger, one half of the stepdads. Very interesting match between these two. What are your thoughts on it? I mean, I mean Jacob Tarasso is this kind of curmudgeonly kid with some scruff on him that's legitimately, I think, addicted to energy drinks to the point where he has a problem. <laughs> a real problem. Um, I don't know if he physically can the amount of monster that's in his system at any one time. Uh, but Wade Kruger, I think, is going to eat him. Oh, man. I think he's going to eat him. I mean, this is a 200-plus pound weight differential. And uh, it's going to be big man versus little man, but in a weird sense because the big man is a fan favorite. That's rarely how it goes. Yeah. So we will see if 
the fans get what they want. If Wade Kruger, what happens to stepdads, can just stomp out Jacob Tarasso, or if Tarasso pulls what I would consider to be a mild upset and yeah. wins this match. Yeah. yeah, I know. And then we have to talk about this, man. Sean Damage from McNellis. And the rogue Brandon Kirk, I mean, what a fight You know, people are going to be treated to that night. This is another case of don't let the name recognition fool you. Sean Damage McNellis was the first man to be UWA League champion mm-hmm. and the first man to be a three-time UWA League champion and the first Crossroads tournament winner and the first Brawl for it all winner. And really was when this brand was making its name for itself, the face of this company. And the reason that Sean McNellis is not as well known of a household name as Brandon Kirk is because Sean McNellis had other life priorities. You know, he has a daughter and he's working hard to provide for his daughter and he just had other life goals. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't want to go out and work the indie circuit. But that doesn't mean that he's not quality. And that doesn't mean that he's not gifted and entertaining. Um, I've, I've worked with him. I've wanted him to be. He was in the first ever CTW match ever. Mm-hmm. That's how much I think of Sean as, as a performer and as a wrestler. And uh, yeah, I, I just look at it as Brandon Kirk being on the role of his life in pro wrestling right now. And it, it's kind of, I'm going to use the Infinity War analogy. He's kind of Thanos right now. He's going everywhere and he's trying to take over and he becomes really offended when people stand up to him. Yeah. And when people say, hey, no, I'm the guy around here. So Damage is the guy around here. Whether anybody likes it or not or knows who he is or doesn't, Damage is the guy around here and he's earned it. So Kirk wants to knock him off the mountain. Yeah. And this is a little bit more than a qualifying match. This is philosophy. This is ideology. This is who's the man right now. Is it Kirk? Is it Damage? And I think this is going to be a very, very good wrestling match. So, Tom, you know, we got to talk about this too. Synergy, do you know who Brandon Kirk might be facing now? Uh, I have a couple of names. I have a couple of Iron and Fire for July 21st. Yeah. That, is a, uh, that is a different conversation for a different time. Okay. Um, because this is a UWA elite thing, and I don't want to. I don't want to step on toes. Okay. So I, I don't want to go out and say that uh, we've got WWE Hall of Famers for the meet and greet, <laughs> and I don't want to say that we have former WWE <laughs> champions on the show. And I don't want to, but I'm gonna. I just did. <laughs> um, uh, but look, this is going to be a huge, huge show on July 21st. We're reopening the Manville VFW. But we'll talk about that another time. Okay. I will say that I'd have nothing to do with the business if it wasn't for UWA Elite giving me my first opportunity to do anything. Definitely. So I'm a loyalty kind of guy. That's how I'm built. Yeah. So I always come home. You know what I'm saying? And I'm always happy to talk about this home. And UWA Elite is home. Absolutely, man. Yeah. So also that night, we're going to see Eddie Thomas... Versus uh, Bradley Belmont. Mm-hmm. That's, that's going to be the kickoff match for UWA Elite. Yeah. Sponsored by UWA Elite.com. Uh, again, the last ever New Jersey State champion in Jersey All-Pro history before they retired that championship was Eddie Thomas. And Bradley Belmont, again, the other half of the stepdad, just because Wade Kruger's in the qualifying round for the championship gauntlet, just because Miles Thomas is in the opening qualifying round, doesn't mean these guys should have nothing to do. So this should be a match between a really wily veteran in Eddie Thomas and a real fun-loving guy in Radley Belmont. Should be a good one. Yeah, these guys, are, they're both representing their tag teams out there. Yeah. Sure thing. So Dan... The amazing to yeah. think is that just a couple of months ago, I looked and I'm like, man, there are no tag teams on this roster. And now we've got the designated hitters. We've got the stepdads. Mm-hmm. We've got the severed. We've got Team Thomas. We've got TP5. Yep. And we've got King Tech and Brandon the Bull are the UWA League Tag Team Champions. And they're going to be going one-on-one with the number one contenders 
Clay Sawyer and Dominic Truax for the tag team championships. Yeah. Neither of these teams existed before last month. That's completely crazy, and yet here we are. <laughs> That's right. And you got you got uh, one of your hottest tag teams in UWA. You got me and Andrew as well. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Andrew's, Andrew's too scared to get in the ring, man. Sure. Derek, I'm pretty sure Dallas could, 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 could go win. I mean, I think he could give Nick K a run at this point. Yeah. He's the high champion. Yeah, definitely. Would you be our manager, Tom? Oh, man. Would you be our manager? So I, yeah, I want to flip this script for you guys a little bit. Okay. Uh-huh. We got all three champions. The UWA League champion, TJ Blades. The I champion, Nicholas K. The Iron Man champion, Bones. That match is not for any of the titles, but the loser, like I said, the guy who gets pinned or taps out in that match, has to defend later that night against five other guys in the championship shuffle. So I want to know from you guys who you think is in most danger of losing that match. If I got to pick, I'm going to say TJ Blade. He's in the most danger. Nicholas K. He's he's a very bad guy. Bowles is an even worse guy. So I can I can see those two guys teaming up together and saying, "Hey, we both hate T.J. Blade. Let's give him a hard night tonight." I can see definitely see that happening. I can see that, and and don't be surprised if at the end of the night, T.J. Blade is getting cashed in on by his buddy Mike Seaway, and he's end up losing the title to his own bro, man. Wow. <laughs> That is tough. That is some. That is some. I don't. Can I even say that? That is some heel mark nonsense. Oh my goodness! (laughs) And you're you're appealing to my inner my inner savage. Like I kind of deep down low key love everything you just said. (laughs) I can see it happening. I can see it happening. That's good good story. Mm -hmm. Andrew, what you got? What you got? You think that TJ Blade's in a lot of trouble, or you think it's gonna be somebody else? I think it might be Nicolas Cage, but I think the silver lining is that a guy like Nicolas Cage is glamoring for the main event, so it might not be the way he sees himself getting there. But the fact that you know he'll be in the main event, you know, have some time to rest. Uh, You know, I see that. Plus, he doesn't like to. You know, he likes that easy paycheck, and he might have to work for you know that money this time. Oh, that's what I'm saying. That's that's whoever is, whoever walks out, either a new champion or retains their title by the end of the night, will have had to beat six guys to do it, and it is not going to be easy sledding at all. I really appreciate you guys talking to me about this card. It's a very unique concept, yeah. Uh, and that's what I like about UWA Elite is that Dave Swan, Eric Corvus, everybody over there—they're not afraid to try new things. Yeah. yeah. This, this is def- I can cannot wait to see what happens. I'm pretty sure it'll be a great show. Yeah, Tom, you touched on this before. King Tech and, and Brandon the Bull versus Clay Sawyer and Don McTurex. You know, who do you think has the advantage in this match? They're both kind of makeshift tag teams, but they're you know, you know, Bull, Bull and Tech have been on a roll. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing: Tech and Bull have known each other for eight years now. Uh, King Tech is the longest reigning I champion in UWA Elite history. Brandon the Bull, out of nowhere, became the first ever Grand Slam champion mm-hmm. in UWA Elite history. Also, funny story, the only guy to successfully cash in a golden ticket in the history of the golden ticket. It's like the reverse money in the bank. It ends up really messing up people's lives. Mm-hmm. But Sawyer and Truax is interesting because Dominic Truax is a legitimate bad dude. He is 911's son, ECW legend 911's son, and he is a big boy. 365 pounds, and Clay Sawyer straight up paid him to be a tag team partner. Like, no gimmick, no bust, no bust, just gave him a lot of cash and said, let's go win the number one contendership. And Clay Sawyer does best when he's in a unit. He was part of the first trios champions in this company with Kentucky Bread. Uh, I think Sawyer and Truex are going to give Tech and Bull a lot more than they might expect and a lot more than the fans might expect. But I think in the end, I think the King and the Bull find a way. I just think they find a way. Definitely. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. agree with that. That's pretty uh, insightful theory. Uh, Tom, where can people get you on social media and UWALB if they want to you know, keep, keep in tabs with you guys? Sure. I mean, first I'll put myself over. Sure, you can find Colin West on Facebook at 
surprisingly enough, it's Colin West, who knew. Um, <laughs> and you can look me up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Synergy Wrestle, and visit SynergyWrestling.com. Uh, UWA Elite, you can find them on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, at UWA Elite. And also visit UWAElite.com. And super big news, when you're on UWAElite.com, you can get a seven-day free trial to the UWA Elite Network, which has every live event from 2012 to the present. It's huge. Plus, UWA Elite Network also has Glory Pro, Preston City Wrestling from the UK, Pacific Coast Wrestling, Jersey All Pro Wrestling, and so much more about Celtic Championship Wrestling, all on the network, all for five ninety nine a month. And have you heard of this Powerbomb TV thing on Amazon TV? Yes. Or, have you heard of this? This big, big old, largest independent pro wrestling library in the world that Pivot Share is doing? Yeah, I heard. You have to check it out. Mm-hmm. UWA Elite is officially a part of that. So oh, their nice. tape library is a part of that network, too. So UWA Elite is doing really big things right now. And I'm really proud of home. I'm really, really proud of home. We started very humbly at, you know, places that would give them a chance, give us a chance like Fun Time America and the Darris Theater and the Metuxen Sportsplex. There was a point in 2013 we were doing weekly tapings in front of eight people. And we're in 2018 now, five years later, and we are selling out 150, 175 people a month at the Holy Trinity Church in South River. So I'm really excited and very proud of home and what UWA has become. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, sounds good. Definitely. Can, cannot wait for that show. I'm pretty sure it's going to be an amazing show. I'm going to start a petition for you to get a Twitter or Instagram. I need you to do that like ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> but Yeah, it's funny because I have I'm a shoot job marketer and I don't have Twitter. Yeah, I don't know. What's, I don't know what's going on. Like, like Facebook. No Facebook is for like my grandma, man. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, no, come on. Now I'm turning grandma. Grandma. I'm on the gram. Facebook for grams. The Facebook for grams. Really, uh, trust me when I tell you, I'll be in touch with you guys really soon. Yeah. Because we got a couple more UWA elite shows between now and then. Uh, and, you know, I'm working over CCW on a couple of things, but Synergy, July 21st at the Manville VFW is going to be an absolute restart for that, that count. I'm so excited for it. Definitely. But in the meantime, I hope I see you guys May 5th definitely. at Holy Trinity Church in South River. Thanks, man. We yeah, definitely Colin. appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time out. Yeah, thanks for Dude, I always will. Like I said, I'll always take the time out for home, and I'll always take the time out for you guys. Wrestling IQ 101 is where it's at right now. I appreciate you guys so much. Definitely appreciate it, man. And for us, we are Wrestling IQ 101. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wrestling IQ 101. And we'll see you soon. Peace! You have just listened to the Wrestling IQ 101 podcast, powered by B Plus Player Radio. One more for the good guy.